Hey guys, welcome back to another Planet Mithril Paints and today we are finally showing you how to paint the Dark Lord Sauron himself. Uh, it's going to be a little bit of a different tutorial for you today, uh, not quite structured as we have done in the past. Uh, when we painted our Sauron, we've explored a lot more uh, in regard to painting him with shades and washes and trying to build up the tones from an underlaying perspective. We've used a variety of different washes, tones and shades and a load of different metallic tones to really try and capture the essence of the Dark Lord and bring him to life on the tabletop uh, and we're really happy with the results we hope uh, that it's something you guys will enjoy watching. Now the biggest problem with uh, the Sauron model is unfortunately he's got quite a muted colour palette. He's basically silver, he's basically grey. Those are the two kind of key colours and a little bit of gold but you got to watch out for that gold. So trying to create some visually impactful highlights and definition across the model is challenging uh, but we think we've managed to show how you can accomplish that with relatively few steps and no small amount of hard work when it comes to the highlighting. He's got a lot of spiky armour that all needs highlighting. Um, also another little disclaimer, there's some armour folds that go down by his waists which we unfortunately thought blended into the mould of the cloak so when we got to that point we actually painted them as the cloak. We, re we um, saw this halfway through the video and we rectified it, and we rectified it. We saw this halfway through the video and we rectified it um, uh, then but uh, obviously for the first half of the video that will look like cloak. So just be aware there's some, there's some hip armour which needs to be painted at the same time as the rest of the armour just so you can maintain the consistency across your Sauron models. So as always we cleaned and assembled our Sauron. We made sure there was no underlying flash in amongst all the grooves. Got to be really thorough with this model because it's very spiky, there's a lot of definition to it. So the resin can quite easily kind of flag up and make some flash in between all the corners so to be very careful and with a hobby knife just get those little bits of flash out. Mold line cleaned the entire model, got rid of all the mold lines and the model was then assembled with super glue, affixed to a 40mm base and covered with fine modelling sand. Finally we did undercoat our sour on with chaos black spray and and now I've got him ready on the tabletop, ready to paint for you guys. As always, we hope you enjoy the video. Please like and subscribe. All your support has been amazing and continues to help the channel going forward. Uh, without further delay, please sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. We're going to start off using Lead Belcher to base cut all the armour plating around Sauron. So it's crucial at this point that we try and get all the armour plating as much as we can with a nice consistent base coat of lead belcher because any bits that we miss aren't going to tie in fully when the model is fully finished. Little disclaimer here, um, there are a couple of armour folds that hang down by his hips which we unfortunately thought blended in with the cloak. So we didn't actually paint these with the lead belcher at this point uh, but later on in the video you see that we recognised our mistake and we did fix it. You want to make sure you get in and around all the spines and in all the grooves on all the helmet areas and all the armor plating. There's a lot of spiky detail, so making sure you get all the undersides and the reverses of these is fairly crucial to make sure we get a nice, even, smooth finish. So we're just get the back of the horns nice and easy, nice long streaks of paint, nice and smooth. To make sure we get a nice, smooth finish with the lead belcher, uh, we recommend periodically just closing the paint up and giving it a proper shape just to make sure the paint mixes up fully again as the metallic range of Games Workshop paints can sometimes split if they're just left open to the air for a long period of time. In this way we avoid getting any patchy coverage. Now you're probably wondering why we have gone with lead belcher rather than a darker hue metallic paint like Iron Warriors. We're going to be painting Sauron uh, mainly with a lot of shades and a lot of recessed shading and a lot of toning down. And we want to have that nice bright look to the armour to begin with which we can then work on shading down because if we use a darker tone for the base coat of the armour, once we've shaded and put all the dark tones underneath it would look far too dark. This gives it a really nice kind of rich, realistic look, the armour that Sauron uses. Just make sure with the mace that we get in all the little cracks and crevices, try and get all the areas on the mace and all the reverse and undersides of all the spikes and spines. And there we go, we've got a nice smooth base coat to Sauron's armour. Now we're going to use Skaven Black Dinge mixed with Abaddon Black and we're just going to base coat the entire cloak section now. We recommend applying this in a few thin coats just to make sure that you get a nice smooth even coverage. Uh, this model has got a lot of detail in some areas of cloak but then the large back portion of the hanging cloth doesn't have an awful lot of detail so if we lose any of that with thicker coats it's going to really hinder us a bit later on. So again we just want to go down his back, make sure we get all the folds of cloak that gather up and bunch up at the bottom of the floor, all the way up his right hand side and his left hand side and around the arm parts where the cloak bunches around the buckles 
and all the undersides and the reverse of the cloak that bunches up alongside his waist as well. So just a couple of nice thin even coats with long control brushes will give you a nice finish to the base coat of the cloak. Now we're going to use warp block bronze and we're going to just carefully dry brush all the chain mail that hangs down the front of the model as well as all the chain mail that's present between the arm grooves and the back of the neck. Try not to bleed onto the lead belcher too much here. If you do, it's not so much of a problem as we're going to be shading the warp block in a second, but it just helps maintain that nice clean finish to the armour that we have already. Now we're going to use warp block bronze, thin down with some Lamia medium, and we're going to very carefully paint in a targeted shade in and around the recesses and the creases in the armour segmentation. So we're looking at manually applying this in all the grooves between all the armour plating, all the recessed areas and all the dips and furrows across all the armour plating. Pay particular attention to all the grooves across the helmet, make sure we get that shade painted in nice and thoroughly there just to separate out all the individual sharp edges of Sauron's helmet and across all the armour plating along his back and the grooves and dips in the fins and all the way down the arms. We're painting this in here at this stage now mainly to provide a little bit of contrast and just make sure the model isn't one amorphous blob of silver on the tabletop. This will just provide some nice subtle shading which will carry through really nicely once accentuated with all the washes we're going to be doing in a few minutes. This also helps create some definition across the small areas of metallics such as the fingers, the arms and separating out all the smaller armour segments and just helping to create a little bit more depth for definition between the lighter and dark areas of the model. Be careful not to overdo this as if we go too far with this the model will start looking bronze and we don't want that, we literally just want to shade the recesses and create a nice sense of shadow. Now we're going to use a wash of Agrax Surf Shade, a Thonian Camera Shade diluted heavily with Lamia Medium and we're going to wash the entire model now. This will just help to tone the model nicely and naturally and give the armour that slightly beaten Mordory look. What we will say is don't overdo this wash, we do not want this wash to pull because if it starts to pull it will start to undo the work that the manual warp block bronze shade uh, did for us a second ago. So just nice and thin all over the model. Now we applied two coats of this. You can use as many coats as you want just to get the right texture and tone that you're after. But we opted for two mainly because we were happy with the tone that yielded us after two washes. But make sure you wait for the previous wash to dry thoroughly before applying a second one. Now we're going to use Nuln Oil, thin down with Lamy Medium once again. And as we did with the previous stage, we're going to apply this as an all over wash. Exactly as we did with the Athonian, Agrax and Lamy and Glaze previously. And we're looking at getting in all the recesses again. And this just really helps to tone down the armour really naturally and give us that almost black look to Sauron's mortal armour that he has in the film. And again, we don't want to pull this either. To keep it nice and thin, nice and targeted, and just make sure we get nice even coverage over all the armour plating just to really tone it down uniformly and make it look nice and consistent across the whole model. And again, as with the previous wash stage, you can buy as many coats as you want. We opted for two again, as after that we thought the tone of the model was really nice, really rich, and wasn't too dark or too light either way. It was just that nice right balance which we wanted for the following highlight stages. Now we're going to use pure iron breaker, and with a very fine brush, we're going to very, very carefully apply an edge highlight over all the armour plated segments. We're going to very, very carefully highlight all the upper areas and edges of all the armour plating. Sauron's armour in this sense is quite a blessing actually because it's very spiky, it's very very well defined so finding where these highlights need to go really won't be too much of a problem but we're looking at just capturing the very edges with a nice thin controlled line of paint. Trying our very very best not to overspill or make the lines too thick so that they bleed into the nice toned armour from the previous washing stages. The finer and more precise you can be at this stage the sharper and more menacing his armour will look which will carry over to the overall life of the model on the tabletop. He's wearing Mordor armour, it's very jagged, very sharp, very intimidating, and we want to try and capture that as best we can by keeping our paint application as tight and thin and controlled as we possibly can. 
Uh, depending on how you like to paint your models, you can use either the edge of your brush or the very tip of your brush. If you've got a really good point to the tip of your brush, we recommend using that as it's a lot easier to control where the paint is going. In this instance, uh, we really want to minimise any risk of bleeding over onto the other toned areas that it's just going to make it look a bit unnatural. And although we could go back and retone down any of the bleed over areas, uh, the result is going to be a little bit blemished, a little bit mix match and not quite give that uniformity that we want from this really menacing suit of sharp evil armour. So just separate out all the knuckle joints down the fingers, these are all interlinking areas so it would be nice and easy just with a nice little highlight there, just all the way around all the spines. With long controlled strokes down the front of his face just to separate out the skull like texture of his face and to accentuate the sharpness of all the horns that grace his crown upon his head. Now again, this is going to be a very time consuming process. Please don't rush this. The more careful you are here, the better your model will look once we're finished. Uh, if you feel like you need to take a break at any point, put your brush down and take five minutes, come back to it with a fresh pair of eyes. Uh, we had to do that a couple of times ourselves just to make sure we were getting a nice consistent finish across the model. And with the mace, you can apply just a long, thin line just down the center shaft, just to catch where the light will be bouncing off the shaft of the mace and then picking out all the sharp details that adorn the head of the mace itself. When you're done, you just have a really sharp look, and really captures the spirit of Sauron from the films. Now we're going to use Iron Breaker mixed with a small amount of Pallid Witch Flesh, and we're just going to very, very carefully for the final highlight stage, just apply a dot highlight just on the very, very edges, the very, very points and the very, very corners of all the armor plating across the model. We're not opting to use anything like Runefang steel here, as we don't want the armour to look overly garish, overly bright at this point. We've spent a lot of time toning it down, uh, so to make it too bright here would really upset the balance of tones across the model. So the Pallid Witch Flesh just gives it that nice muted look to the Iron Breaker and gives a real natural feel to this dot highlight. So just work your way across all the armour plating as well. This might be nearly as time consuming as the previous highlight stage was, but we just want to create that nice little sense of sharpness and light definition where the light is bouncing off the most upper edges and corners of this very jagged suit of armour. There we go, and that's the hardest part of Sauron. Done now! Finally, we're going to use Drakenhof Nightshade, thin down again with Lamia Medium, and we're just going to apply this as a very, very light glaze all over the model, just to give it that slight bluey, ethereal texture, as befitting the Dark Lord of Mordor. You want to make the dye look really, really thin here, as we don't want to make the armour toned blue after all this hard work. However, it's purely optional, and if you are happy with how the arm looks at this point, you can skip this blue glaze entirely. Now we're going to use Hashalt Copper and apply a nice thorough dry brush to all the chainmail sections. This will go over the warp block bronze really nicely and give a nice slightly contrasting tone to that of all the silver armour we've done already. Don't forget to get all the chainmail around the back of the neck and underneath the arms. Now we're going to use an Agrax Earthshade wash thin down again with a little bit of Lamia Medium and just wash all the chain mail. This will sink really nicely into the definition between all the links of the mail and give a really nice sense of definition and flow across all these areas. Now we're going to use Canoptec Alloy and apply a lighter dry brush just over all the chain mail areas focusing a little bit more on the more pronounced and raised areas of metal in the Agrax Earth shade provide definition in the recesses and the base layer of warp block bronze and hashalt copper showing through ever so slightly underneath. Finally we're going to use Iron Breaker and apply a really featherweight dry brush just to the absolute edges and upper areas of the train mail just to give a little bit more definition and show where the light will be hitting these slightly more raised areas while showing the bronzy tones underneath. Now we're going back to the cloak. We're going to add some Gawthor Brown to the Skaven Blight Dinge Abaddon Black Base Coat and apply this as an all over layer all over the cloak as we did with the base coat layer. 
Again, you might want to apply this in a couple of thin coats just to get a nice smooth, even finish. The addition of the Gawthor Brown to this mix will accentuate the slightly brown tone of the Skaven Blight and give the cloak a little bit more of an earthy tone and give us a really rich base for us to base the highlights off later on. Now we're going to use Abaddon Black, thin down with some Lamian Medium, and as we did with the Warplock Bronze shade for the armour, we're going to shade all the recesses and the folds in the cloak with this Abaddon Black glaze. Just make sure we get in all the creases between all the most pronounced folds of cloak, just to create some nice definition and give the material a bit more of a natural flow to it. A wash at this stage would also achieve the same thing, but unfortunately a wash here would detract from the overall look of the earthy tones brought on by the Gawthor Brown added to the previous layer mix. So with a targeted shade like this we can control where our recessed shadows are put in and really help create some authentic flow to the material across Sauron. The bottom areas of the cloak are really well defined in regard to folds and obvious recesses. The large area down his back is slightly less so, so just make sure you take your time and work out where this shade needs to be put along these areas. Now we're going to add some Dawnstone to the previous Gaven Black Dinge, Abaddon Black and Gawthor Brown layer and we're going to layer over all the cloth once again, this time trying our best to leave the Abaddon Black shade showing in the recesses which we have already put in place. Again, as we said, the bottom of the cloak is very well defined so it's very easy to work out where you need to put these layers to create a natural sense of flowing movement across all the material. The Dawnstone will help lift the overall tones of this slightly earthy layer from the previous stage and will also bring up the tone really naturally and really nicely which will complement well with the look of the armour once we're finished with the final highlight stages. We we'll get around all the crests of material, all the most pronounced areas creating a real sense of light and shadow between the darker and lighter areas of model. For those eagle-eyed among you it's at this stage you'll realise that we noticed we painted the waist armour in the same tone as the cloth so we have gone back and rectified this but hopefully you didn't do what we did and painted this as you did with the rest of the armour originally. Nice long controlled strokes down the back panel of material to avoid any streakiness and create a nice sense of authentic flowing material. We're going to add more Dawnstones in the mix for the penultimate highlight stage. Now again, as we did with the previous layering stage, we're going to focus on the upper areas of material as well as where the material bunches up more prominently. And we're going to keep our highlights tighter and thinner than we did last time, just so we can further push the definition of light and shadow between the two areas of cloth on Sauron. Again, keep your brush strokes nice and controlled, nice and targeted, to really push the effect of the bunched up material down the bottom, creating a nice sense of flowing material all the way down him. I'm careful here to try not to overwhelm the nice earthy tones of the previous two layers so don't add this too rashly and take your time to get these highlights in place where they need to go. The Dawnstone mix at this point should be no more than 50% of the overall mix and we don't want to overwhelm the grey tones too much by creating too much of a stark contrast by adding too much Dawnstone in at this stage because if we do add more Dawnstone than we should do at this point the highlights will look very unnatural and start looking almost Tron like and won't tie in with the rest of the tones we've got across the model. Finally, we're going to add some Ulthran Grey to the Abaddon Black, Skaven Black Dinge, Gawthor Brown and Dawnstone Mix for the final edge highlight stage. And again, as we have done the whole way through the cloak process, we're going to push the highlights again that little bit more, just with nice, really thin edge highlights just on the absolute upper edges and crests of material, just where the light will be catching off as he marches down the slope of Dagolad. You don't have to follow all the creases of material from top to bottom. You can start about halfway to two thirds up any of the creases and follow it down to the bottom. This will help push that nice realistic sense of contrast as the cloak is casting shade 
as it hangs down over the other areas of material. just want to frame all the areas of cloth really nicely, nice and tightly, and the overall look here will really complement the look of the armour when we're finished. At this point your mix should contain no more than about 25% of Ulthran grey, again for the previous reason of not wanting to overwhelm the grey mix too much and creating too much of a stark contrast. If you've got your ratios right you should have a really nice effective looking cloak which really captures the essence of Sauron's model. Now we're going to be using some Forge World weathering powder dark sand and with a dry brush just very lightly brush it all the way around the very base of the cloak when the material bunches up on the floor. This is another way by which we can just create another little bit of subtle spot colour to create more of a visually impactful model on the tabletop. Now if you don't have any of the weathering powders the same look can be achieved by dry brushing some steel lesion drab over the bottom followed by some paint blade brown. However, you want to make sure you keep your dry brush really thin, really light, as you don't want any streaky paint to overwhelm the nice look of the cloak we've achieved. Now we're going to use scale colour black, and we're going to very carefully pick out the eye holes of Sauron's helmet. This has a very matte texture once dry, and will really capture the soulless manis of Sauron. Now we're going to use Retributor Armour and we're going to very carefully just pick out the one ring which adorns Sauron's finger. Just with a nice thin band of Retributor Gold which will pick out the ring really effectively. And now we're going to use Auric Armour Gold and just apply a very fine dot highlight just to the top of the band of the one ring just to give it a subtle little glint of light. Now we're going to use Mechanica Standard Grey and we're going to apply a fairly thorough dry brush just to all the, the sand on the base just to portray the dark greys of the slopes of Mordor. Now we're going to use Dawnstone and apply another dry brush just over the top of the sand keeping it slightly lighter than the Mechanica Standard Grey just to pick out some of the upper textures of the base. Finally, we can use pure pallid witch flesh and just apply a feather light dry brush over the dawnstone just to pick out the top area of the base. Now we can use some PVA glue and just sporadically place a few small patches over the base which we're going to use to affix our base decorations. We're using burnt grass here just to portray the dead wildlife that must be mingling around in amongst the land of Mordor. This just helps break up the overall look of the grey base and give a little bit more visual appeal. Now we're going to use dry up bark and once we've securely affixed Sauron to a freestanding surface we use a pot of paint and some blue tack just to make sure it's nice and steady. We're going to carefully paint the rim of the base just with a nice solid line of dry up bark just all the way around, nice and solid, just to finish off our Dark Lord. And there we have it, the Dark Lord Sauron, finished and ready to wreak his tyranny upon all of Middle-earth. Hopefully during this tutorial we've been able to show you how you can really capture the essence of the Dark Lord and create a really stunning visual model with some nice different muted, beaten and dark tones to really, really capture the essence of Sauron himself in his pursuit of his precious.